Well, after that press conference, and I had the chance to sit down with the Hollywood legend Nicolas Cage. And let's hear what he had to say about his experience in China and also about his movie career so far. How did it go with the, uh, the project Outcast? I think it went very well. I really like what Nick Powell did with the movie. Mm -hmm. uh, I like being in China filming a movie. This is my first time filming uh, an actual drama in China. And um, you know, I've been here before with different companies, but never a, a movie. And this was a chance for me to start mm. my experience. I'm supporting in the movie, so it was only a month. Mm -hmm. I do want to come back, and I want to work with the Chinese director and Chinese, you know, Chinese actors. If there's something that makes sense for uh, a white guy like me, I would like to be able to do that here in China. So we are able to see you more in the future? I hope so. And yeah. actually, China is becoming, well, now it's the second largest movie market in the world, and they're expecting China becoming the largest, actually, in a few years' time. I have no doubt. Right. It will be. And you, you do realize that you have a huge fan base here in China. I like that connection. I like that flow with people I meet. You know, mm -hmm. I can tell it's sincere, and so that, that always feels good. Absolutely. I mean, have you, have you talked to your Chinese fans or maybe your colleagues in China? I mean, since uh, 1990s, actually, uh, every movie of yours was a huge hit, actually, in China with your Chinese fans. I, I didn't know it was to that extent, mm. um, but I was recently in Macau, and we had the uh, Wadding Awards for mm. cinema, and I really, I really felt the enthusiasm there. It's mm. different for me here than it is in other parts that I've been to. I know you are comfortable with different cultures. You have an in international family, and now you're shooting a movie in a new culture, in a new country. How different does it feel to you and to be filming in China? I, I think it's just that I want the experience. I want new experiences. I want to be stimulated to find new ways of performance. Mm. I want your culture to find something in me that I have not found yet and, and hopefully improve my work. I'm always learning. I mm. always want to learn. I consider myself a student of film performance. And if, 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 if a, you know, a Chinese actor or a Chinese director brings out something in me that's new for me, I want to go there. Mm. See, I don't want to keep repeating myself. Mm -hmm. You know, I've made movies in Los Angeles, and I've made movies in New Orleans, and I've made movies, uh, you know, in, in different parts of the world, but this is the first time I've made a movie here. So w what I can tell you is it has been a very successful experience for me. Mm -hmm. The Chinese crew has been a hardworking crew, a very kind, kind people. There's a, there's a nice flow to my conversations. And, I, and that only makes me want to work harder and really try to give you something that you will like mm -hmm. that's homegrown in your country. What about your co-stars in this movie? A outstanding, all of them. I mean, um, they've all brought something different. Um, Summer, who plays my wife in the movie, I know she's uh, the voice of China. Yeah. And then this is her first movie. That's right. But she... she she brought a, a, a heartbreaking charm to the performance. I mean, you really care about her. We have a, a pretty emotional scene where her, uh, well, I, I'll give it away, she passes on. But, but in that scene, it, the, the look in her eyes, in her face, is, is just so heartbreaking. Mm. I didn't get to do enough with the other actors. Yeah, I didn't get to work with her so much. But I, I can, of course, tell that she's, she is uh, very serious about the work. And she has this elegance and poise about her that is uh, extraordinarily charismatic. And I hope if I do come back, I can work with her mm. uh, again. Mm. Uh, I hope that we will see more um, Chinese actors in American cinema, too. Mm. You know, I have a, you know, we, we do see Gong Li a lot or Zhang Zi, Chow Yun Fat, but, but it's very rare to see uh, uh, the Chinese male actor in Hollywood movies, mm -hmm. which is something that I <clears throat> take great umbrage with. You know, I, 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 uh, you know my son is Asian, and uh, he may want to direct one day. He may want to 
he may want to be an actor like his, his father, and mm -hmm. I want that to be open to him, you see. So I want to make some kind of effort to see more of that happen in, in Hollywood as well. Is he also here this time around? He was here with me for the first two weeks, but right. he had to go back to the States because he has to go to school. What a loving <laughs> father. <laughs> uh, thank you. <laughs> uh, selfishly, I wanted him to stay all the time, but the teacher said, no, he has to go back to school, so That's he went right. home. Now, talking about male actors from China, you know, just not long ago, there was a um, Hollywood production, the franchise uh, sequel, Iron Man 3, and they specifically made a Chinese version out of it. And Chinese fans, Chinese moviegoers didn't really buy that idea. Well, originally, the Mandarin is a very famous uh, supervillain from the Marvel comic book Iron Man. Mm. He is Mandarin, He's, you know, but Ben Kingsley is not. Mm -hmm. So I can understand where there might be some confusion about that. Mm. That's what I'm talking about. Right. You know. But, I mean... You know, I am a fan of Chinese cinema. You know I have a relationship with John Wu. I, face I, Off. A face Off, of Wind Talkers, mm -hmm. and, and uh, you know that Bruce Lee influenced me greatly. But, you know, like I, I have, I, I think Tony Leong is, is one of the great actors. Uh, I would like to make a movie with Tony, but I don't mm -hmm. know how, how to do it. Mm -hmm. You know, I want to do it. Right. But talking about that, you're a a director at the same time you're also a producer so do you maybe in the future plan also to produce maybe a movie in China yourself? Oh, that would be great I would love to mm. I hope so you know I, I have other things I, I'm doing at the moment but w my goal one of my goals is to have as I said earlier out there a base near near mainland China maybe, maybe Hong Kong would be a good mm -hmm. match for me I, I like being in Hong Seriously, Kong. Seriously you'll be well, I'm thinking about ha ha having a base there right. so that I can work here, hopefully, more mm -hmm. often. And I would, I would have a, a marvelous time working with someone like Tony Leung or mm -hmm. John Woo again in Hong Kong. That's you know. right. You said you want it to break the ground. You want it to be something, to have something new, new experience. Yeah. Talking about this character in Outcast, is it somewhat different from what you portrayed in other movies previously? Well, it is different. I mean, I... I I'm a crusader. I did something like that in Season of the Witch, but this is more of a, a straight-up drama, whereas Season of the Witch was more of a supernatural story. But in terms of performance, you know, I'm, I'm working with an English director. He wanted the English accent. Um, I'm talking, I'm, I'm working with a character that goes through a catharsis where he, he transforms from uh, a man who is a violent man as a crusader who who, d who no longer wants that life and he's, he leaves. Mm -hmm. I think any time you can make a movie where you see different cultures coexisting mm -hmm. in a way that is harmonious, that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. And I and I that's what I responded to in this character because he has this I wonderful experience in China and mm -hmm. then Hayden's character comes in and messes it all up for him. But that. But that was what was appealing to me. But how do you choose characters? Also, how do you choose movies? Based on what? Well, based on do I like where I'm going to be and do I like the people I'm going to be working with? And is there something new in the character that I can learn from? Mm. Does it challenge me in some way? Does it scare me in some way where I have to reach for something? Mm. Uh, and, and is it you know, uh, again, something new where I'm not repeating myself. Mm -hmm. So to me, the whole experience of making a movie in China was new. Mm -hmm. That was new for me to work with a Chinese crew and yeah. work with Chinese actors. That's right. So I want to do that again. For, for your Chinese fans, and actually they started to know more of you in, in the 90s, The Rock, that was a huge hit here. And ever since then, somehow many people got the impression that you are more or less like a, an action star. How would you like to, um, say, you know, describe yourself? Uh, how do you see yourself as an actor? Um, eclectic. I want to try everything. Uh, it just so happens that my, uh, what, what I like to call adventure movies, mm -hmm. uh, many people call action movies, are the ones that seem to translate well to different parts of the world. Mm -hmm. They're the ones that people go to see. But if you look carefully at my filmography, you will see a World Trade Center or a Leaving Las Vegas or a Bad Lieutenant or I just did, did one recently called Joe, which is a very small, independently spirited drama. Mm. 
It's just that those movies don't get as much attention as the adventure films. But I, I have been very careful about being eclectic and mm -hmm. mixing it up. I, I don't want to get trapped in one style. But when I was a very young man, I was in Africa mm -hmm. with my father. And uh, we decided to go to the cinema. And the movie in a, in a room it was about this big, a little, little hut in Africa. All the African people were watching the movie. It was a Charles Bronson movie. Do you remember him? Mm -hmm. I knew then that, that, that the action-adventure movie would translate overseas. It would, get to it would get into the hut in Africa. It would get into different places around the world. So it, it was a very um, carefully planned idea to, to have tenure, to, to be able to stay working to be able to still communicate with different places. Um, and that's what I've done. Mm -hmm. But having said that, I still want to make other movies. I, I want to continue to make dramatic movies and, mm -hmm. and comedies and, and romantic movies. And romantic comedies. You, it seems you've set aside a special room for some independent films, which yes. might not have a big budget, but you're willing to sacrifice your own income, actually, to make it happen. Yes, because those are very often the most interesting characters. Those are the ones that, because there isn't so much money riding on the project, mm. you can take more chances. Mm. And then what happens is, I get an idea on that kind of a movie, like A Vampire's Kiss, and I'll say, well, that worked, or that didn't work, but this worked, and then I'll take that same style of acting, and I'll put it in a John Woo, John Woo movie called mm. Face Off. Mm. So I have some of the same facial expressions, almost kind of very operatic expressions, I'll take from Vampire's Kiss and put it into Face Off. So that's like a new experience, but you're acting, but at the same time you're learning some learning. new things. Always learning. It's always, the independent movie is like a laboratory, because mm -hmm. there's not as much risk. There isn't like, you know, millions and millions, 150, 200 million dollars. You can mm -hmm. take chances. Mm -hmm. There aren't too many people there are what I call too many cooks in the kitchen telling you what to do or not do. You can mm. breathe a little more. Mm. But when you find something that works and you're confident enough, you can put it in a big movie. But in recent years, actually, the critics are extremely critical with your <laughs> movies. And I say, right. hey, wrong choice of films. Does that bother you? I can't. I can't. Who knows with critics? I can't let it bother <laughs> me. I'm happy. I, I'm making movies I want to make. Um, something's working. But yeah, is that going to influence the, you know, the way you choose the characters no, and movies? No, you movies? can't make your choices based on what critics think. Mm. You have to make your choices based on what is honest for you. Mm. What, what it, otherwise, you have no integrity. Then you're just bowing to critics, which is not, uh, it's never, it never works. Talking about acting, once you mentioned you, you, you're rather a, um, a, a performer than an actor. Yeah. Well, what's the difference in the two terms? Well, there really isn't. But somebody pointed that out. He's not an actor anymore. He's more like a performer. Well, okay, whatever that means. But okay, I'll take it. I don't have any argument with that. Like when I when I act, I I hear it like music, in my head. I, I hear the dialogue like music, mm -hmm. and I and I, and the movements like dance. So to me, music and dance are performing arts. And by the way, so is acting. So it's it's a kind of it was a kind of a stupid comment by a, a fellow actor from years ago. But the truth is, there is no real difference. But I do design my performances, and then when I get to the set, then the this part I can't talk about the the magic inside, the sacred part, the the emotion that I fill it with. But I design it first, like performance. And you are a great fan of uh, comic books. You have a huge well, collection, and your son is also a fan. Well, that's sort of been blown out of proportion. I have to be <laughs> totally honest. You know, I mean that. That I, yes, I'm loyal because I grew up reading them when I was eight, and they're interesting. They're colorful. They're like full of adventure and mythology. Mm. But uh, it would be misleading if I said I. You have an image of me reading comic books voraciously <laughs> right now. No, what I'm saying is, is it possible maybe in the future you would have your new interest in animation and you make cartoons? Oh, yeah, well, yeah. And a great voiceover in the crews. Well, I thank you. No, I've always been open to animation. Mm. I would love to, to be the voice of an animated uh, character that's from a comic book, sure. I, I, I guess what I'm trying to say is, in the spirit of being eclectic, I want to do a little bit of everything. So I don't want to limit myself to one thing. Those are open to all possibilities. Yeah, all possibilities. That's what keeps me interested. That's great. Thank you for your time. All right. Yeah, thank and you. All the best wishes. All right, thank you. thanks. Thank best you. wishes to you too. Cheers.